So guys, well, welcome back to this channel. Now, based on that election that happened in River State and all the things that is happening in River State, you know, people have started coming out to hail Fubara for his uh, courage to, you know, do some certain things that he did in River State without, you know, sentiment, without, you know, uh, fear. He's a courageous man and people are really applauding him for that. People are really coming out to say a whole lot of things about that. You know, Wiki thinks he can, you know, remove everybody in River State, even the IT of police, to hit to his own command. But Fubara is against it. Fubara is not a kind of man that he can just remove anyhow. He does what he knows is right. And that is what he has in fact he did he, he, he broke he broke the recording in, in River State. He did a whole lot of things. You can imagine he conducted a, a, a local government election without the police and it was peaceful and people have started coming out to applaud him for that. Now this is Kenneth Okokwa coming out to say a whole lot of things he said uh, Fubara is my hero and that they should hold the IGP of police if there is anything like bloodshed in River State, they should hold him responsible. That's the IGP of police. That was what this guy said. This um, uh, 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 Kenneth Okokwa. In fact, he said a whole lot of things in this video. Let me just play the video for you guys to watch and see what he said in that video. I'll see you guys in my next video. But please, if you are new to this channel, just do well to subscribe, like, and also drop a comment below. I'll see you guys in my next video. Many have died, and lot more will be recovered dead. That tells you the story of this country. What we are celebrating in this independence is 64 years of madness. Because you can't do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. That is the technical definition of madness. We are celebrating darkness. We are celebrating hardship. We are celebrating hunger. We are celebrating incompetence. We are celebrating corruption. We are celebrating the emergence of kakistocrats and kleptocrats in our government. The government by the worst and the government by compulsive thieves. Now, I give you an example. There is Hurricane Helene buffeting more than five states in the United States of America. President Joe Biden, the Vice President Harris, and even the presidential candidate, Trump, they are going to these states, commiserating with them, offering their help, providing welfare, providing humanitarian services. But in Nigeria, our own president purportedly is jetting away to enjoy himself in vacation. What do you call that? But you know what? I am going to say this because the media people are not doing this government any service. Rather than telling us the truth that he is unwell. Because human beings can fall sick. When we were campaigning, we knew he was unwell. When I was in London, I heard they got him coming out from St. Mary's Hospital. Rather than telling the people the truth that he has gone on medical vacation, that he is unwell and has gone to examine himself in a hospital. So that at least you don't portray him as being insensitive. So that you don't portray him as enjoying why Nigeria is burning. They are saying he has jetted out to enjoy himself. What sane leader will go out to enjoy himself when more than 150 persons have died in a boat miscap? If that is true, then... You cannot blame Governor Sim Fubara for saying that there is a need to build a psychiatric hospital to examine our leaders because that's the only thing left to do. I would describe the situation in River State as a state of madness and I would describe the conduct as embarrassing. First and foremost, that a PDP will sabotage the government of PDP in River State by purporting they are not going to partake in the election 
in the local government election in River State tells you that PDP now, as presently constituted, is a party of abnormality. And that APC's government cannot do the right thing to encourage River State to conduct its local government election tells you that APC party, as presently constituted, is an apology. So these two parties have become unapologetically abnormal. And that is what is happening to the Nigerian state. Nigeria has become a nation that is unapologetically abnormal because of the influence of this PDAPC. I said it before that these two parties, they are two, the two heads of a monster. And we can see what is going on. Let us come into the issue of local government election. First and foremost, if you recall, the last regime of the local government in River State, when their tenure ended, they wanted to extend their tenure through the instrumentality of the House of Assembly. And I was in support that it was illegal. And Governor Fubara wanted to use a caretaker committee to replace them. I was one of the lawyers that said this is illegal and that I do not support Governor Fubara to do that. And Governor Fubara can see that the Supreme Court sided some of us who said that the Constitution is clear on how the local government should be governed. Section 71 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, states the system of local government by democratically elected local government councils is under this Constitution guaranteed. And every state shall ensure its existence by a law which provides for its establishment, for the structure, for the composition, for the finance and functions. The key phrase is democratically elected. The key statement. Now, the Supreme Court that gave judgment based on the case that Tinubu took to court through his attorney general gave a judgment that no local government in Nigeria should be governed again by caretaker committee and that elections must hold and they put a punishment that any local government that does not comply the allocation to that local government should be withdrawn and after consultation 90 days was agreed on so 90 days from that judgment not only that it is illegal unlawful but it attracts punishment that can make a local government and a state unviable and fubara marshaled out the state the reverse state independent electoral commission to organize the local government election in accordance with the Supreme Court judgment, in accordance with the provision of Section 7. And then you are telling me that some politicians who are enemies of progress, enemies of River State, enemies of River's people, are parading the judgment of a lower court to say you will frustrate the judgment of the Supreme Court. That is judicial recklessness. Let me give you an example. In the United States, the DOJ was prosecuting Donald Trump, a former president, for interrupting and trying to overthrow the election. The president went to Supreme Court and the Supreme Court gave judgment that he has some immunities. Immediately the Supreme Court gave judgment, whether you like it or not. The whole system 
the whole persons and authority in the United States, now started doing everything, including the DOJ, to make sure they conform with the Supreme Court judgment. Whenever the Supreme Court gives judgment, the only duty of lawyer courts, the only duty of any person or any authority in Nigeria is to ensure that the Supreme Court judgment is enforced. So the courts ought to be giving orders of mandamus compelling every party that is involved in election of River State, which include INEC, because INEC must give the register to the River State Independent Electoral Commission, which includes the RESC, that is River State Independent Electoral Commission, which include the police, any person or any authority, what they should do or ought to have done is that they must do everything the law said they must do to comply with the order of the Supreme Court, which is that local government election must be held in River State within 90 days. And so the IG of police going against the judgment of Supreme Court because he's parading the judgment of a high court is an is a blasphemy now let me give you an example if the igp of police gives an order and a police corporal disobeys it and the ig summons the police corporal and the police corporal stands in front of him and say yes sir i disobeyed it because immediately you finish giving the order the commissioner of police in my state gave a contrary order and I decided to obey the order of the commissioner of police instead of your order. What do you think the IG should do to the policeman? Sack him. But that policeman, the corporal, has done exactly what the IG is doing. IG is purportedly saying he has an order of a high court. When the Supreme Court has given an order and he's saying he has decided to obey the order of the high court instead of that of the supreme court and what does that mean the igp should be fired you know why by going to river state i'll tell you the laws he has breached he has breached the policy of tinubu's government which is that every local government must hold the election within 90 days and igp is there to frustrate the holding of the election so he's even working against the policy of tinubu's administration it wasn't me that went to court it was the attorney general of the federation on behalf of the federation and on behalf of the president who is in charge of the executive powers of the federation so the igp is working against the policy of this government two igp went to river state he was standing on the land of river state not on federal land. He was standing on state agencies' land, not on federal agencies' land. The Land Use Act, Section 1, said every land in a state, every land comprised in a state, is vested in the governor of the state. And the state is holding it. And the state governor is holding it in trust for the people. Which law? gives the igp the right to go and stand on a state land in front of a state agency because the only exception is if the land is federal government land or federal agency to give orders to a state governor no it is the state governor that should give orders to the igp because he is the chief security officer of the state i don't know where the igp got that power but let me tell the IGP, unknowing to him, he has committed a judicial cue. The constitution is very clear. In section 1, subsection 2, he said, the government of Nigeria shall not be governed, nor shall any person or group of persons take over the control of the government of Nigeria or any part thereof in any manner except in accordance with the constitution the constitution has already decreed 
that the system of local government by democratically elected local government councils is guaranteed under the constitution. So if the IGP went to River State in the negation of this provision, then he has become an accomplice to trying to assist people to give them the power using the instrumentality of the state to make river state to be governed or a part of it by people not in accordance with the constitution so the igp is now an accomplice to trying to commit judicial kill and let me tell you section 84 subsection 15 of the electoral act is very clear that nothing in this section or in the whole electoral act shall empower a court to stop the primary election or general election pending the determination of any suit. So where will the courts get the power to want to frustrate the election, local government election in River State? You know what they want to do? They want to make the government of Governor Simfubara unviable. They want to make sure that the local government people in River State and their people do not get their share so that they will make it to, that he will have political problems with his people. And unfortunately, the IG of police is lending his voice to support this illegality and unlawfulness. Let me tell you, by IGP of police withdrawing the security from River State, Anybody that dies or is killed in that election because of that withdrawal, that will be a murder case against the IGP of police. I'll give you an example. Why is God holding David responsible for the death of Uriah? Did David physically kill Uriah after committing adultery with the wife of Uriah? What David did was, David set him up and he told his army, set this man up in front of battle and when he's in front of battle, withdraw from him so that he will be killed. Who did God hold responsible for the murder of Uriah? It is David. Because he's the one who withdrew the force after setting up Uriah. IGP withdrew Nigerian police to set up River State to go into flames. So whoever dies there, the blood is on the head of IGP or police. And that's what I keep saying, that any politician who is not willing to go the way of Governor Simfubara, to stand up to resist criminality, illegality, to stand up to say, if I perish, I perish, but I will do the right thing. I will stand for democracy, stand for rule of law, stand for my people because they voted for me. Any politician who is not ready for that resistance and protest should step aside. What Governor Sim Fubara is doing is absolutely correct. He's resisting intimidation, manipulation. He's resisting people who want to take over River State and the local government in a manner that the Constitution has not decreed. The same people that we are shouting that Governor Fubara was governing River State with caretaker committee are the same people that want to frustrate the election. That is how insincere liars operate in government. What they are fighting for is their pocket. It is their positions and power, not the people. And the people must rise up to defend themselves from these leaders. So what Governor Simfubara did and is doing is in order, and I support it. What the IGP of police has done is illegal, is ungodly, is criminal. He should apologize to the people of River State, and he must make sure that not even one hair of anybody in River State falls to the ground, because the law is clear. The police is there to maintain law and order, so the police cannot withdraw in any circumstance from any situation that could cause chaos the police cannot double into political issues igp is doubling into political issues he must withdraw from it and he must make sure that the others are maintained in river state 
and the chief security officer in River State is Governor Sim Fobara, and his orders should be maintained. And any lawyer, any judge, any court that is not upholding the rule of law should be held responsible and accountable. I've said it that when it comes to electoral jurisprudence, our judges have not lived above board. Let me make it clear that I am embarrassed that a lower court can go against the decision of the Supreme Court. And even in a manner that I believe that Supreme Court is even right. So you can't even be talking about judicial activism because, okay, let me give you an example. Can you imagine if the four years term of this regime is coming to an end and the court gives an order that the election will not hold? And then I hope the IGO police will remember to go and take the order and say he's stopping people from going to vote on that day. Because electoral bodies are meant to be independent. And the law is that they should not receive any direction or control from anybody. So a court giving an order that election will not hold in River State, knowing it will constitute constitutional crisis, knowing it will deny River State from even its allocation from the federal government, that judge has not upheld the tenets of justice and rule of law as a lawyer i cannot support that by any by any iota of imagination because the whole idea of interpretation of constitution is to give value to it not to destroy it do you know in law if you have a motion for instance seeking to destroy the rest and there is a motion seeking to preserve the rest. Even that motion seeking to preserve the rest, even if it came last, it will be treated first. That's the position of the law. Then you have people saying there is a judgment to destroy the rights of the reverse people to vote. And they're saying there is another judgment that says go and vote. And you're telling me which one will I choose? when there is a superior judgment of the Supreme Court that has settled the matter. Why would they even double into it? And they will say, the facts are different. The, what do they mean by that? That is judicial trickishness. That's judicial craftiness and cunning. The whole idea is hold election within 90 days. And the duty of every person and every authority in Nigeria is to ensure that the order of the Supreme Court and the provisions of the Constitution is obeyed. And so the judges, whoever partook in that, should be disciplined. That's my opinion. And if you recall, even the law that says 1993 election should hold, if you recall, that law ousted the jurisdiction of the courts to give any order to stop it just as it is in our laws today and yet a judge went ahead because some military boys did not want the election again they wrote the law and they used the instrumentality of the court to want to destroy the election but something happened the neck then under Professor Woos refused and they went ahead to conduct the election. And the election was conducted and a winner emerged. Then the same military boys went and forcefully stopped the announcing of the result. Still wanting to use the courts. And this is where Humphrey Woos lost it. He would have proceeded to complete the announcement and announce the result. Why run away and chicken out? And many years after, even after when the man had died, you're coming to say you are announcing he won. No. If you want to do the right thing, do the right thing no matter the consequences. 
If you don't want to do the right thing, keep quiet and keep quiet forever. That's why when people want to marry, they will say, if you know anything that wants to stop this people to marry, come and talk, or forever remain silent. From now onwards in Nigeria, if you're giving a duty, do it. Whoever wants to stop you, say no. Go ahead and do it. That's the only way we can be saved from this cup of leaders. They don't have conscience. They don't respect the rules. And they want to corrupt everybody. So please, if most refused to obey the injunction not to conduct the election and proceeded to conduct the election, and started announcing the result, he wouldn't have succumbed to the blackmail of the military boys then. He would have proceeded to complete the announcement and announce the widow and finish his job. And whatever happens to him, he would have known he has done his job. That is what Sinfubara is doing. He said, if you shoot me, go ahead. You will go down in history as the most wicked and callous IGP that killed Fubara. When you want to take over the leadership of your place or you want to represent your people, what were you thinking? You think leadership is a common case? No. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Whenever you are in leadership, look at what happened to Donald Trump. In America, where security is everywhere. Yet, two times now, they wanted to kill him. Every profession has its own risk. If you're not willing to take the risk that is attached to any profession, step aside so that people who are given that mind by God will go ahead and serve God in that capacity. If you're an actor and an actress and you say you're not going to hug babes and you're not going to kiss them, step aside. <laughs> because that's, that's what the job is. Don't come and say, you're a born-again Christian. <laughs> That's what the job entails. If you're a politician and you can't stand for your people that voted for you, and because you don't want to die, step aside. Because that's what the job entails. Any politician that is not behaving like Simfubara, who will resist and protest when his rights are trampled upon, knowing that our judicial system, knowing that our electoral system have failed us, that any politician who will not stand his ground, no matter the risk to his person, I said, I will not speak for that politician again. And I maintain it. And you can see what is happening because we can't go forward. We calm down. If Simfubara has been saying, calm down, calm down, do you know where River State would have been? He said he's ready for them. He's fully prepared. The election must go on. The election must hold. Winners must be declared. They will be sworn in. And whatever is going to happen, let it happen. I am looking for leaders who would say nobody will rig my election. And if you rig my election, I will fight. Nigerians, come out and fight. If they kill anybody, let them kill all of us. Oh, yes. And thank God I'm seeing it happen. What Fubara did, was he advocating for violence? Was he advocating that the law should be broken? No. He was advocating for his right. That's my opinion. That's my advocacy. We must advocate for our right and stand by it. I did not disqualify anybody. I don't have that right. I said, I am not going to speak for anybody going forward except this person meets this criteria. In any case, we have finished 2023 election. It's over. 2027 election has not come. So anybody who is saying betrayer, betrayer, what am I betraying? There is nothing on ground. When I was a spokesman in 2023, I did my job creditably well. And we convinced Nigerians on what we believe is right. But you can see that in Nigeria, you not only have to have the power to win election, you have to have the power to defend your election. So anybody that does not have that spirit or power to defend the votes in a manner that you would say, whatever happens to me as a person, let it happen. I am not willing to speak any further for the person. So what I just simply said is that going forward, I will no longer be part of this until these fears are addressed. 
So I did not disqualify anybody. One, I don't have that power. Then two, I am not betraying anybody because I'm still a member of the Labour Party. And you can see I'm still fighting that Labour Party should be consolidated because Nigerians are looking for an alternative to these people. But if you want to fight these people who are compulsive thieves and who are the worst amongst us, leading us, according to Sidetan Ndume, who is part of them, then you have to grow higher and be more aggressive than calm down. That's what I said, and I stand by it. In all honesty, I would have said we don't. But because I'm a student of theology, I would not say so. Because when Elijah thought he was the only person that was worshipping God, God said, no, you're not the only person. There are more than 7,000 persons like you still in that country that have not done anything evil. I know them. So the only thing we have to do in this country, we must not be sentimentally attached to anybody, any politician. We must not be loyal to political parties or politicians. We have to be loyal to the country and to the law. And if any law is, if any law is unjust, we have to fight the law. If anybody is doing anything illegal, no matter who the person is, we have to fight the person. So in Nigeria, we must create the environment so that those 7,000 that we do not know who are leaders will be able to begin to emerge. If the good ones keep quiet, they will never emerge. When people say people are selling their votes, you know why they are selling their votes? Because they believe that even if they vote their conscience, it will not count. Not because they want to be corrupt. They saw what happened in 2023. I was an active participant in that election of 2023. They did not sell their votes. But after, it did not count. So they'll be like, why would I go and say I'm voting for my conscience? When it will not count. If I'm going to take this money, at least it will be what I gain. So if we don't fight... We are making the people that want to do the right thing to even lose confidence. That is why we must have to rise up to defend democracy. We must make sure that our votes count and are counted in every election. Otherwise, people will not see the reason to vote their conscience. Because even if they vote their conscience, it will not count. So, in Nigeria... There are still a lot of men and women that are not corrupt. I may not know them. But they will emerge. There are still a lot of judges that are not corrupt. I can say that. Because I've won a lot of cases as a litigator. And I have never met any judge privately. If every judge is corrupt, that means I wouldn't win any case. So I can say that there are judges in our court that are not corrupt. We may not know them. But we must create an avenue to defend such ones when the hawks that are corrupt want to swallow them up. So also in all the department ministries, agencies in Nigeria, there are politicians that are not corrupt. There are Nigerians that are not corrupt. Why is it that when Nigerians go outside Nigeria, they perform creditably well? It is because by their nature, they are not corrupt. But it is the environment that is helping to make them corrupt it is the poverty the hunger and hardship that are contributing to tempt them to be corrupt i want to tell you it's not every nigerian that is corrupt it's not every judge it's not every civil servant that is corrupt but we must fight so that those people will have the courage to arise I cannot ever remember myself being corrupt in anything. I do my best. I say the truth. And I will leave the rest to God. Does that mean I'm ascribing perfection to myself? Then that means I am not honest. I am not even a good man. There is only one that is good. And that's God. The only thing I know is that I'm an honest man. And we must fight to save our country we are now at the edge of a precipice 
and every Nigerian should not keep quiet. We must fight for our country. We don't have any other country. What Alex Oti did was purely legal by the constitution of the Labour Party. Article 13, 2A talked about the composition of the NEC, the National Executive Council of Labour Party. And the governor, elected governor, and the deputy, III, is a member of the NEC. And the presidents and general secretaries of the labor unions marking, manning the labor centers are members of the NEC. The women, chair, the chairman of the women commissions of the labor centers, they are members of NEC, statutory members. So immediately I NEC, not even labor party, rejected Aburi and rightly too for not conducting any convention known to law. The only set of people remaining as members of NEC are the statutory members, which include Dr. Alex Oti and his deputy, the presidents of NLC and TUC, and their general secretaries, and the chairman of the Women Commissions of Labour Party. By the constitution which Abure gave to me when I came to Labour Party. It was not Labour Party that declared Abure seat vacant. It was INEC. And he was disgraced out of INEC. And Labour Party has always insisted that there will be a party of rule of law. Because Article 8C is very clear. That the aim and objective of Labour Party is to create a new Nigerian personality that is altruistic, that is patriotic, and that is committed to rule of law and due process in all spheres of our national life. And so that's why we are fighting. And I will continue to fight that the writing should be done. Abure did not conduct any convention. Can you imagine? I said I was not even aware that a convention was going on. And do you know what? They, they missed the point. At least INEC has a bragging right now that it is more honest that than some group of people in Nigeria. INEC can now claim that at least it is more honest than the Abure-led, expired Abure-led NWC of Labour Party. They did not give any notice known to law to INEC. First of all, they say they gave a notice by December for a convention that will hold by March. The question is, which notice? They say they gave a notice to INEC about a purported convention that will hold in Omar here in a different date. Please, did Aburi and his cohorts hold any convention in Omar here? Good. Does that not invalidate it? They say they gave another notice for one convention that will hold in Edo. Please, did I, was there any convention held in Odo? Edo? The only notice they are saying they gave to INEC for a purported convention held in Nay was six days to the time. That was when INEC received it. Please tell me any law that says you will give notice to INEC for six days to hold any convention. And the law is clear by section 82.5. That any convention without such valid notice is invalid. That's the law. Apart from that, it's an insult to INEC that you're giving INEC five notices for a convention, and all of them are speaking of different things. You know the danger in that, if INEC accepts it, there are about 18 political parties. If each party will be giving INEC five notices for a convention and they're accepting it as normal, they would have about 90 notices to treat. And then six days to the time. Let us assume you told INEC you're going to have your convention in Sokoto. And they mobilized everything waiting for you to have it in Sokoto. Okay, let me even give you an example. If you said you're going to have your convention in Abuja. And they mobilized their people. With the cost of fuel now, they can just trek from their office to Abuja. 
and they have done everything like that, not allocating money for flight, not allocating money, then a day to the time. Because once you accept, you will accept for six days, which the law does not permit. That means somebody can come a day to the time. So a day to the time, you come to INEC and say, no, you've changed your notice. It is not going to be in Sokoto. And it might not, it might be in a town close to Nigeria Republic where they will need to mobilize their people in terms of flight, in terms of accommodation, in terms of everything. If you allow INEC to allow the illegality that Abure and his colleagues perpetrated to stand, then INEC has opened itself to such illegality that 18 other parties will be exploiting it and they will cite that one as precedent. INEC did the right thing by making it clear that Abure did not organize any convention known to law. But here is another thing. Convention is for the members of Labour Party. It's not for INEC. Can Abure and his colleagues tell the world where any one notice was given to the members of the Labour Party that there is a convention? One notice. Because the law is clear. In section 82, subsection 3 of the Electoral Act, that the executive of the party must be elected by the members of the party or their elected delegates. And then he did not even give notice at all to members of the Labour Party. At all. No media house announced it. So it's not even INEC. INEC's own is to come and monitor. But the people that ought to be the ones to conduct convention, to vote in the convention, are the members of the party or the elected delegates. Nothing like that happened. So are you trying to say that a president will now be created in Nigeria where people will not involve the members of a political party and they will come out and announce themselves that they are leaders of that party and you say it will be allowed to stand. That's another madness. Abure had an agreement with all the stakeholders that he was going to organize an all-inclusive convention. He did not do it. The law says that he should step aside because his regime is over. The members of the Labour Party did not vote. Will it surprise you to note that the Labour Party does not have any executive at any level? Not at what level? Not at local government level? Not at state level? Not at the national level? And somebody is claiming to be the national chairman and he has been there for years. If you're a member of that party, if you're supporting such a person, are you not insane? Whoever is supporting Aburi and his cohorts, that person is insane. Governor Fubara's psychiatric hospital should be recommended for that person. No, how can you come and you're supporting an executive that did not even say you're a human being, that did not even invite you? Have you ever seen a national convention where none of the posts none was contested for. none in the so-called convention no position was contested for can you imagine the national chairman seat nobody contested for it the journalists were not allowed to come in to see people voting do you call that convention there was no convention at all in the eyes of the law and i next simply said there was no convention we don't have any report. We were not invited. In a manner known to law. And members of the Labour Party, including me, he said, I was not aware. I saw it on the social media. And it is true. <laughs> and I was a spokesperson. No. Will I be telling myself the truth if I ever support such a convention? What mouth will I use to condemn another political party? At least the difference is that in the Labour Party we are fighting. And we will win. Because the victory of good over evil is settled. So in Labour Party, what Alex Oti did, and that appointment of Nenadi Usman and Dalitin Wokocha is purely according to the constitution of Labour Party. Because when the NWC expired and INEC accepted it, then the legitimate members of the NEC 
which has 33 members, met as neck. And the Labour Party constitution gave them the right to appoint the executives of the NWC in between conventions. It is there by the right of neck by Article 13 to be. They have the right. So they just appointed it in accordance with the Labour Party constitution. 2019. That was what happened. Purely legal. It was not an imposition. It was their right. And you saw how Alex Oti went about it. He invited everyone, including the Abure group. Every stakeholder in the Labour Party was invited. At least Abure did not invite the members of the Labour Party when he did his own convention. Alex Oti invited every stakeholder. So which one by equity do you prefer? And by law. So the law is on his side. And Labour Party did what they should do by the constitution of Labour Party and by the laws of Nigeria.